Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we'll continue our discussion on facet grids. Let's look at an example of a facet grid from our previous lecture. So we'll call and initialize the facet grid function and then use the map function to map it to one of matplotlib's functions. Okay. As before, we'll save it in a variable called x. So we'll start by calling the facet grid function. And then we'll be using the tips data set for our columns and rows. Let's pass for column, let's use time. Okay. And for our row, what did we use in the previous lecture? We used smoker. And then let's call the map function and map our facet grid to matplotlib's scatter function. So plt.scatter and then we'll pass total bill and then tip. The scatter function takes at least two arguments. So we have to provide at least two arguments. Let's run this. So we have smoker, yes, yes and no, time, lunch, and dinner. Another thing we can do is we can pass the hue attribute. And so instead of using smoker as a row, we can pass the hue argument and show a legend here as smoker, yes, and no. Let's see how we can do that. So I'll copy this here paste it in a new cell. So for column, we have time. And instead of row, we'll use the hue attribute. And for hue, we'll set it to smoker. So when we map it, we have our scatter function. We have our total bill and tip. So if I run, if I run this as it is right now, let me show you and what we will get. So we'll have time, lunch, and dinner, right? We have our total bill and tip. There's only one thing missing. Our hue is missing, right? So I know that we have blue and green. So one of uh, the colors is for smoker and the other color is for non-smoker. So the only thing we are missing is a legend here. So how can we add a legend? To add a, to add a legend, we will call the add legend function. So by calling that add legend function, we'll be able to display a legend here. So what we'll do is we'll call the add legend function on this entire object here. Okay, so that add underscore legend that's the function let's close our bracket okay if we run it now let's run it okay now we have a legend smoker yes and no yes is for blue is for yes and green is for no and we have our time lunch and dinner and total bill so by provide by passing smoker as hue, we have two less legends. I mean, two less grids, right? Otherwise, we would have gotten four different facets of grids, grids of facets. So that's another thing we can do with our facet grids. Next, let's map our facet grid to the boxplot function that Seaborn has. Okay, let's do that. So x is equal to sns that facet grid. And then we'll be using the tips data set for column. Let's use the day column. Okay. And we'll map our object to Seaborn's box plot. And let's pass total bill and time. So this 
Foxplot function takes at least two attributes. So what do you think we will get if we run the cell? Let me run it and show you. So here we have a box plot. We have total bill here and time lunch or dinner, right? And another thing we can do is let me copy this paste it here we can change the position of total bill and time so if we want our time to be displayed as a row we can change this position so time comma total bill and run it so we have time I think this is much better or easier to look at than the previous facet grid. So here for time we have lunch and dinner and total bill paid. Day we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So that's our facet grid map to the box plot function. And we can apply some attributes to our facet grid here. For instance, we can change the size by calling the size function. And let's say five and see what it looks like. So that's a size five. If we change the size to two, for instance, it's much smaller. Let's say seven. We have that. And another attribute that we can pass is called aspect and we can change the aspect to different values. Let's, let's try one. So aspect one, let's try 0 0.2. Okay, so you can play around with these values until you get a nice proportion. Okay, I think this looks nicer let me change the size to maybe four maybe six i think i like this so you can change the size and aspect ratios to different values another thing we can do is change the order in which the days are displayed so here the days go from thursday through sunday if we want, we can change the order. For that, we'll be passing the column order attribute. Okay. Let me copy this thing and show you. So here we have facet grid tips, column is day, and we'll pass the column order attribute to change the order in which the days are displayed. Let's do that. So we have column underscore order and we'll pass the list of days we want to be displayed the order of the list of days let's start with saturday and maybe thursday i want saturday to be displayed first and then thursday thursday followed by sunday maybe and finally, Friday. So you can change it to any order that you want. Let's run it again. Oh, I am missing a comma here. Run it again. So now we have the order that we specified. Saturday followed by Thursday, then Sunday and Friday. And if you want to change the color, you can apply the color function. And let's change it to maybe red and run it so now we have red box plots here and another thing we can do is we can change the color of our facet grid by applying the palette attribute okay let's see an example of that let's copy one of our previous facet grid functions 
let's copy that for instance paste it here and what we can do here is apply the palette attribute in our facet grid and set it to any palette that you want let's say cool warm okay so we have a cool warm here let's change it to HUSL we have that let me copy this and show you one more palette let's try winter underscore R and that's winter underscore R and again you can pass the size attribute let's say 4 and aspect maybe 0.3 uh, that doesn't look so good let's change the size to 8 I think I like this so you can change the size and aspect ratios to a size that fits your needs well to, to the size and aspect that you like the most okay so we can use one or more we can pass one or more attribute to our facet grids function just to summarize we looked at facet grids in this lecture and we saw that our facet grids they have a two by two grid of facets and once we initialize our facet grid we can map our facet grid to either matplotlib's various uh, functions or Seaborn's function to display a nice grid of facets and we can obtain lots of information from our facet grids and by passing certain aspects we can control the way in which our facets our facets are displayed great thank you everyone and see you at the next lecture